Hey y'all, Patrick here with Vetted. Okay, this is me reading the entire Eric Davis, Admiral Wilson memo. That's all this is. I made another video that dives deep into the background of it. Uh, the why, the how, the who, the everything, the what. Uh, so check that video out. This is just me reading the entire Wilson memo. Let's begin. October 16th, 2002, Eric Davis meeting with Admiral Wilson. The notes, right? Rich says to go to EG&G &G Special Projects Building at Greer and Paradise. Quote, meet at 10 a.m., don't be late, unquote. 1010, Admiral late, arrives with two Navy officers in uniform. He's in suit, now civilian, in uniform. One full lieutenant. One commander, petty officer, drives car. Greetings with Admiral Wilson. We sit in his car in back of EG&G building. Talk until 11.20 a.m. Others departed for building to attend meeting inside at 10.10. Wilson, hello. The minute I saw your resume, speaking of Eric Davis, U.S. Uniform Services ID copy, AF orders, and physics paper Rich gave, I knew who you were. Put two and two together. Figured you out. Figured who you were. Laughs. You don't want to talk about my career or DIA history. No. Eric Davis. No, actually not. Wilson. I recalled phone call with Oak Shannon in fall, August 99. Big Oak Shannon fan. Go back years in Navy before Oak left for LANL. Wilson. Oak talked two hours. Wanted to convince to talk to me, Davis about what he told Will Miller circa June 97 and April 97. Read the Boston Globe story, Leslie Kane. Yep, UFO topic. Crash retrieved UFO craft bodies, etc. MJ-12-like UFO organization or cabal. Eric Davis. What was said? Wilson. Confirmed Greer Miller Mitchell gave talk in Pentagon conference room. Admiral Mike Crawford. General Pat Hughes were present, others too. Date, April 97. Edgar Mitchell said, April 9th, 97. After group broke up, Miller Wilson talked privately two hours on UFOs, MJ-12, Roswell, crashed UFOs, alien bodies, etc. Wilson intrigued, knew about intelligence on U.S. military, intel, UFO, close encounters, and foreign government encounters. Seen records, told Miller. Wilson. Yes, Miller asked a question on MJ-12 UFO cabal crash UFO. Confirmed he called Miller circa late June 97 and told that he, Miller, was right. There was such an organization in existence. What did you tell? Davis asked. Wilson. I found it. Where I looked, who I talked to, but did not name everyone. That's it. Davis, I show Miller letter to me, Eric Davis, dated April 25th, 2002. Please evaluate. Wilson laughs. Didn't tell Miller everything. Miller knows what I did in Pentagon Records group search, but no more. Miller can make good educated guess on who contractors has alien hardware. Do not pay Miller. Sounds Hard up to pay for nice Florida home and private beach privilege. Laughs. Wilson. Miller can give good advice on which defense companies to look at. That's all he knows. Changes subject. Oak told about J.A. Doesn't trust J.A. A liar. AP10 group meetings at BDM. References Bloom's book. Talked about J.A. Bloom's book. His role. Oak's. There, who attended, etc. Oak briefed me on whole BDM thing. Talked about RV program for 10 minutes. I know something of this RV. Oak said, I, Eric Davis, was team player. Would keep mouth shut. No media connections. Obey all restrictions. Not in government. No clearances. But pedigree, excellent. Professional, personal references, very excellent. It says paperclip letter here. So... 2190 Overbrook Avenue, North Bel Air, Bluffs, Florida, gives the address. April 25th, 2002, Dr. Eric Davis, CEO, Warp Drive Metrics. 4849 San Rafael Avenue, Las Vegas, Nevada. Dear Eric, 
I must apologize to you and Hal for not getting back with you sooner. The fog of war, current business activity, and losing your new email address all contributed to the delay, which I regret. First, I must ask if you and or Hal would be interested in meeting Dr. or Mr. Bob Beckwith in Tallahassee, Florida, the evening of May 30th. Bob has been invited to meet with the head of the Florida Academy of Sciences and the director of the High Magnetic Field Laboratory for a roundtable discussion of his, uh, Mr. Beckwith's force model of the universe, universe and his planned experiments in LTT, levitation, teleportation, and time travel, among other subjects. I believe that the meeting date is now firm, but that will be determined in a conference call Thursday, 25 April. Now, let me respond to a few of your and Hal's previous questions. I would be willing to assist you and Hal with your ongoing research into UFO crash retrievals and the entities within the government or outside of it that are involved in that business with the following caveats. First, there must be absolutely no mention or association of my name with your work or investigation. I have absolutely nothing to gain from such association at this time and possibly much to lose. Second, I would charge you only for the actual time I spend in putting together materials, references, or contact lists for you to pursue. I would expect that time to be minimal since that initial information would not take long to put together, probably less than eight hours. My standard rate for such work is $180 per straight time hour. Third, nothing I would provide you would be classified from a national security perspective although I have held a top secret TS clearance with access to special compartmented information, SCI, and other special clearances for other programs. I currently do not work in the classified realm, nor do I hold those clearances. As I discuss with you, only by means of working on a current classified government contract and having the need to know, and thus requesting my previous clearances be reinstated by DOD, would I again work in the classified realm. Now, all that said, and pending further discussion with you and Hal on your ultimate objectives for having such information, I could provide the following. One, particulars on a special team involved as a secondary mission with recovering crashed craft, including, but not limited to, the previously classified F-117 stealth fighter. This team or its successors, its parent sponsoring entity, and its two key officers may provide some of the information that you seek. Two, the name and last location of a senior officer who I believe had firsthand knowledge U.S. government alien reproduction vehicles, ARVs, at Area 51 and associated locations. Three, the name and current location of a retired senior flag rank officer who I believe was directly involved in government interaction with a significant UFO event on the east coast of the U.S., and I believe has, by virtue of his former leadership position, high military rank and control of significant military forces, direct knowledge of USG involvement in this business. Four, a list of civilian government contractors who, by virtue of their past and currently highly classified work, current capabilities, clearances, specialized personnel, and geographic areas of concern, most likely have current involvement in and knowledge of USG work in alien-derived technologies, crashes, landing, and associated events. If you have any interest in the above, please let me know. Finally, I have a request. I'm trying to locate a company in Las Vegas, Nevada, which some years ago manufactured a specialized disabling pepper spray for the military and law enforcement. The company was called One Mark Inc., gives the address, and I knew its VP, a Mr. Joe Sucaro. Any help in locating him and or the company would be appreciated. Best regards, Will Miller. Wilson, told Oak it's a bad time. Time no good to talk to me. Davis, too busy. Said Oak too difficult to contact anymore. Heard he was in and out of hospital. Extremely sensitive to stress, heart sick. Bad news. Tried calling. Linda takes messages, but none return. She doesn't want much on Oak's plate for fear. Didn't say yes or no to request. I would think on it. Three years pass and retiring. Left DIA July 2002. Replaced by Admiral Jacoby. Wilson. Came to test site. Special area to wrap up projects. Began in 98. Successor can't be bothered with right now for lack of time and knowledge. Did tour audit. Say goodbye to folks. Trip set up by NNSA. 
National Nuclear Security Agency, Rich and Doug, you know them, AFIO members, told about how new Las Vegas chapter needed guest speakers for chapter, public venue, raise money, membership, etc. Rich Doug talked about the talked about you, Eric Davis. Phone from DC, sent me copies of your NASA papers and other related wormholes, your thing. Sent PACAF orders, USID, Lockheed Slide, some reports I wrote for NASA. Davis, when? Wilson, oh, September after Labor Day. Rich Doug told me I should talk to you about DIA careers, discuss history, mission, my career in that, etc. I knew better later when I saw your papers and stats they provided, remembered Oak phone call, and what he sent me, what he said about you. Davis, what did you do with it? Had office do background checks. Doug Rich offered to, but wanted my own data to be sure. AFIO vouched. AFIO people, DC people now in Vegas vouched. Wilson gave deep, serious thought, recalled Oak's call in 99. Oak really supported me, had good arguments. Davis, what were they? Wilson, I wouldn't talk to press, to groups, referring to Davis, UFO or other such. No media connections, not talk to Miller or Greer or related folks, no vested interest in publicity, money, fame, notoriety, etc. Davis, we spent time discussing my background, answered his questions on my AF, NASA, and related work interests, etc. History with AF jobs, what I did, education, career choice, etc. No mention of NIDS. Oak mentioned JA, me, NIDS, in 99, but that's all that was said. Wilson, very furious, very angry about Miller. Facial expression, tense, angry voice. Violated personal and professional trust, especially among intelligence colleagues, Navy officers. There's Navy camaraderie among officers, brotherhood. Violated that and confidentiality. Davis, how? Miller told Greer their conversation. Who knows who else he and Greer told? Davis, no. Miller told Ed Mitchell, who only told me in 1999. Wilson, then he talks to Keene and Boston Globe, or Kane and Boston Globe articles came out. Not sure what he told Kane, but articles referenced me. Wilson, furious, got calls from all over. Davis, what was their nature? Sarcastic, or Wilson, sarcastic, stupid jokes, stupid comments, comments of surprise and derision that I would be talking to UFO nuts, nutty UFO groups, etc. Wilson, uh, Davis, who? Wilson, co-workers, flag officers in Pentagon, lower staff, civilian, SES people, people in intel community I work with, got calls about articles and didn't like it. Wilson, I'm taking risks talking to you, but trust Oak's word and it is good with me. We should have met Oak together face to face, but present health problems prevent that too bad, so I'll take risk with you. Wilson, Rich and Doug, vouch for you. Say your word is good with them. AFIO connection, important for trust. You... Davis, know how to be team player. Background check clear, no derogatory items found. Korean record good and AF trust you. I'm running out of time, so let's go with this. If you blow my trust, I'll deny meeting you, deny everything said, won't meet with any more people without clearances to talk about this topic. Too risky because of security violation just by mentioning it. Very tightly held info. Absurdly closely held subject matter. Never seen anything like this program in black programs community. Davis. Okay, then. What happened in April through June 97? Wilson. After parting with Miller, week later, he thinks, I made calls, knocked on a few doors, talked to people, went on for 45 days, thereabouts, on and off. Suggestion came from Ward, General M. Ward, to go through the records group's files, like an index system. In OUSDAT, Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisition and Technology. Ran into Bill Perry in May 97, talked about this quietly. He suggested the same thing. They told me of a special projects record group not belonging to usual SAP. A special subset of the unacknowledged carve-outs waived programs not belonging to usual SAP divisions as organized in 94 by Perry himself. Set apart from rest, but Barry covered by conventional SAP special access programs. Davis, who was USDAT? Wilson, uh, was Paul Kaminsky. Talked to both Paul and Mike Kostinik, a brigadier general. 
Davis, Michael Kostanik, question mark, Wilson, and Paul's office, OUSDAT, Director of Special Programs, and OUSDAT, Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisition Technology and Logistics, as organized, reorganized, by Perry in 94. Mike is also Director of SAPCO, Special Access Programs Coordination Office. Mike is member and executive secretary to SAPOC, Special Access Programs Oversight Committee, in capacity as SAPCO director. Mike is a member of the senior review group. Wilson was deputy director, DIA assistant, joint chief of staff, J2 at time. Boss was director, DIA general, Patrick Hughes. Wilson, so found the unusual record group, read the index abstracts. Davis, budget info? Wilson, no budget info. That is kept in secret records for audit purposes. A security budget record is copied into a folder for the program. Talk to Mike who said it was like two to three times the program budget, but there were times when it went as high as six to seven times core budget. Though it was absurdly high, said Perry wanted investigation on that, but was told to drop it. Davis, who told him that? Wilson, he didn't want to answer my question on that. Said I could find out something from Judy Daly. Judith Daly, Assistant Deputy Under Secretary of Defense for Advanced Development, OUSDAT. Wilson, she said by phone call that security and other program budget records were being revamped and relocated to their own records groups. Security budgets were sometimes cum cumulative and not annual numbers. Easy to see how misunderstanding occurs when comparing to annual program budget figures. Six to seven times could be two to five years cumulative total. There have been errors in way security budgets reported. Wilson, Perry ordered all these issues to be reorganized and straightened out to improve audit transparency. Davis, change subject. So what SAP special action special access program compartment did you find it wilson core secret won't say davis code name question mark wilson again won't say core secret davis who was the project contractor or usg agency that runs program wilson an aerospace technology contractor one of the top ones in us davis who wilson core secret can't tell Davis, defense contractor, Wilson, yes, the best one of them. Davis, intelligence to Wilson in their corporate portfolio. Davis, give a hint. Wilson, sorry, no. Davis, what happened when you found contractor? Wilson, I made several calls, end of May 97, first to Paul, Mike, and Perry to confirm I had right contractor and po program manager to talk to. Davis, they confirm? Wilson, yes. Davis, then Wilson, end of May 97, made three calls to the program manager, one of them conference call with security director and corporate attorney. Confusion on, on their part as to why I was looking for them and what I wanted from them and wanted to know about. Very testy tone from all of them. Davis, what do you mean? Wilson, they were agitated about my calling, surprised by call. Davis, what you asked them? Wilson, yes. Davis, what was that? What words? Wilson, I told I read their program record in the OUSDAT special program records group and wanted to know about their crashed UFO program, what their role in that was, what they had, etc. Also asked if they heard of MJ-12 or some such organization code relating to crashed recovered UFO craft. Davis, reaction on phone to that? Yes. Or Wilson, yes. Asked who I... Asked who I talked to before I called them, so I told them, and they weren't happy with that answer. Davis, you mean about Perry, Paul, etc.? Wilson, oh no, I didn't tell them I talked to those guys. Davis, whom else you talked to? Wilson, there were the other program managers I called. Davis, you didn't mention that before. Wilson, thought I said something. Davis, who were they? Wilson, three programs who said they weren't what, who I was looking for. Four programs that referred me back to the present threesome. Davis, why the latter? 
Wilson, because they were part of it in different compartments placed in different layers of the compartment's pyramid, split up to do different things or parts of it. They're all in the same records group, but their connection to each other is not obvious. Typical thing, but unusual in records. Davis, what then? Wilson, I told threesome I wanted formal briefing, tour, etc. Was exploiting my regulatory authority as Deputy Director, DIA, Assistant Joint Chief of Staff, J2. Told them my not being brief was oversight they needed to correct. I demanded. Wilson, they needed to discuss this, his demand, so hung up. Got called two days later, and they said they don't want to talk on phone and arrange for a face-to-face meeting at their facility. Davis, did you go? Wilson, yes. Ten days later, mid-June or so. Flew out there. Met in their conference room in their secure vault. Three of them showed up. Davis, three guys with whom you had telecon. Wilson, yes, same three. Security director, NSA retired, a CI expert, program director, corporate attorney, call themselves the watch committee or gatekeepers. Davis, why that phrase or name? Wilson, I asked. They said they were formed out of necessity to protect themselves after a near disaster in the past almost blew their cover. Something to do with an agreement that was reached with a couple of Pentagon SESs overseeing SAPs in those days were vague about when that was. What was this? Wilson, let me finish. They said years ago in past, an audit investigation led to them, and it wasn't supposed to. Nearly outed. A battle. Nasty Nasty back and forth between them and the investigator and his Pentagon chief ensued like a tug of war for program transparency. They told me money was the issue. Their hiding out became the other issue. Some kind of threat was leveled to blow the lid off them, so they backed down and let the investigator in to complete his job. They worked very hard to keep program hidden. Davis, what happened with that? Wilson, he was officially briefed, given tour, shown their program. Davis, did they show him a craft or hardware they said was alien or from a UFO? Wilson, didn't say more about that. Said after that episode, a formal agreement was struck with Pentagon people, SAPOC, SAPOC, to prevent this in future. Didn't want to repeat special criteria or establish an agreement. A special circumstance that must meet rigorous access criteria set by contractor committee. No USG personnel are to gain access unless they met the criteria to be administered by contract committee, program director, attorney, security director, irregardless of the tickets and position USG personal possessed literally their way or the highway. Davis, what are criteria? Wilson, I asked for that and they refused to give answer. I was mad. Implication is now to me. They operate without official oversight or any justification. Politically dangerous place to be. Threesome concern with who Wilson had talked to at Pentagon or elsewhere by phone, fax, email, wanted accounting of conversations, concerned about new exposure. Purpose of meeting was to tell me this. Davis, what? That they weren't going to let me in the door. Davis, why? Wilson, they said my tickets were all confirmed and valid, but I was not on the bigot list, B-I-G-O-T. My tickets alone were not enough. I think it's bigot list, sorry. I didn't meet the special criteria, so need to know authorization was not being granted. Went back and forth with them over these points, primarily with security director and attorney. Wilson, argued more. They wouldn't accept my arguments that they fell under my statutory oversight and regulatory authority as deputy director, DIA, under purview for my right to have, need to know, oversight, audit, justification issues, et cetera, et cetera. Regulatory and statutory authority is deputy director DIA, not relevant or pertinent to the nature of their program. Then they pulled out their BIGOT list to convince me otherwise. Several pages long, dated 1990, updated 1993. Davis, who was on it? Recognized names? Wilson, that is core secret. Willing to say that most were program employees, names and titles, job titles, civilians. Didn't recognize any military personnel. Could be there. Davis, any politicians? Wilson, no. No White House names, no president, no congressional people, no congressional staffers. Davis, any in Clinton or Bush senior administrations? Wilson, no. But handful of names were Pentagon individuals I recognize. Few from OUSDAT, one from another department, another at the NSC who was Pentagon SES employee. 
program manager said they were not any weapons program, not any intelligence program, not any special ops or logistics program, doesn't fit these categories. I asked what they were then. Loud groan from program manager. Security director and attorney say it's okay to say it. Davis, say what? Wilson, they were a reverse engineering program. Something recovered years ago in the past. Technological hardware was recovered. So I thought they meant recovered Soviet, Chinese, et cetera, hardware and reverse engineer it like a missile or Intel platform or aircraft actually came to meeting expecting to find a sensitive foreign collection and reverse engineering operation. Thought UFOs used as a cover for that. So I said that and they said they weren't that either. They had, program manager talking, a craft, an intact craft they believe could fly. Space, air, water, dimensions. Was it from overseas or not? Said no, could not be, not possible. Why, I asked, where did it come from? Program manager said they didn't know where it was from. They had some ideas on this. It was technology that was not of this earth, not made by man, not by human hands. Said they were trying to understand and exploit technology. Their program was going on for years and years with very slow progress. Agonizingly slow with little or no success. Painful lack of collaboration to get help from outside community of experts and facilities to assist effort. Must remain isolated and use own facilities and cleared personnel. Tough environment to work. About four to 800 on the list count of the BIGOT. Workers varying in number with funding or personnel changes. Miller questions asked. Roswell, craft, bodies, autopsies, Holloman Air Force Base Landing, MJ-12 and leak docks, Zamora and Bentwaters, etc. They were mum. Declined to discuss these. Wilson threatened to go to SAPOC, S A. POC to complain, gain access to the program. They said, go ahead and do what you must. I was angry because they defied my authority to be read in with good logical reason, wouldn't budge. Their tone was very testy, terse throughout conversation. Davis, what was outcome? Wilson, meeting broke up and I returned to Washington. Davis, what about Corso? Wilson, Greer talked about Corso on April 9th. Miller showed me the book during two hour private conversation. Didn't have time to read it, though. Did buy a copy. Didn't bring Corso up at meeting. But comparing Corso's story to what I learned at meeting is more than enough to believe Corso told truth about seeing alien hardware, etc. Davis, did you complain to Sapoc? Yes. Called the subgroup members, senior review group members, group members to a meeting at Pentagon. Told them what happened at meeting. They responded that they would sustain the contractor on their access denial, so I ended up arguing with them a while. Broke up in 20 minutes, and they would meet me in two to three days. Got the call two days later, near end of June, and met again with senior review group members. Davis, when? Before last week of June 1997. They told me, Wilson, that they were sustaining the contractor, that I was to immediately drop the matter and let it go. Forget about it, as I did not have purview over their project. It didn't fall within my oversight, etc. I became very angry, started yelling when they should have kept my mouth shut. Davis, Miller and Greer said you nearly got busted. Wilson, close to that. Told Miller Senior Review Group Chairman said if I didn't follow their suggestion that I would not see Director DIA promotion, get early retirement, lose one or two stars along the way. Really incredibly angry, upset over this. Livid. Why such a big deal over this considering the position of trust I have in the Pentagon? I do have relevant regulatory statutory authority over their program. That's my position. Davis, is it because funding comes from you or through you or director DIA? Wilson, core secret, can't answer. Davis, back to BIGOT list. Can you describe type of people? Wilson, corporate types, scientists and technicians, engineers, scientists, managers, etc., Davis, any military organizations you recognized? Wilson, none. Just OUSDAT people and two on SAPOC. One other Pentagon office. In December 97, Paul was out as USDAT, left government. So was Mike K, replaced too. 
Davis, by whom? Wilson. Jacques Gansler was new USDAT, started December 97. Mike K was replaced by Brigadier General M. Ward, Air Force. Davis. Were Paul K. and Mike K. and Jacques Gansler and General Ward the ones on the BIGOT list you recognized? Wilson. Won't answer that. Wilson, talk to Gansler in January 98 about my June 97 meetings. He was briefed by someone, surprised me. Davis, what did he say? Wilson, UFOs are real, so-called alien abductions, not real. Gansler said this. Davis, what else? Wilson, told to drop the matter, no more discussion about it. Davis, willing to talk to Hal Putoff and Kit Green? Question. Discussed who they are and RV program history. Wilson, not familiar with names, heard about RV program in 1990. Maybe, maybe not for how, would think about it. No response on Kit Green. Prefers never to talk to anyone else about this again. Risk exposure, better to stop talking, cut it off here. Wilson, what will you, Eric Davis, do with this? Davis, keep for private personal research. Data collection to track down the story and ascertain signal noise in media and from government sources. We'll keep my mouth shut, et cetera, et cetera. Told Wilson about Mary Elizabeth Elliott, TRW story, Ingo story, and 1974 RVer woman who went to WPA FB trying to make connection. Wilson, feedback. Mary Elliott sounds like real deal based on her info and behavior with attorney Jeffrey W. Griffin. Probably will only come totally clean on her deathbed 30 years from now. Don't know about Ingo, Axelrod, or RV or woman at WPAFB. Doesn't have info on their stories from sources. Ask for Corso material. We'll send. Davis. No. Wilson asked for briefing book on my work. NASA, AFRL. Send other papers if I want to. Give an office address in D.C. to mail. We'll retire to Midwest and close office in 2003. All right, guys, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the entire Wilson memo. What a long video. Uh, check out the other one we did on the background of all of this. It's a lot to take in. Um, fascinating stuff. So please leave a like, comment down below what you think was the most interesting part, um, and subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next video. Remember, every day is a gift. Peace.